What is up everyone? It's Josh here from the Architect Student Blog and welcome back to another video. In today's video, it's going to be very short, but I'm going to show you how to fake a hand drawing using just SketchUp. Now, you might have seen the various different styles that you can do using SketchUp. I was never particularly keen on them. I've actually got a style that I've been able to edit solely using SketchUp that does very closely represent a hand drawing. Now if you're like me and you're not very good at hand drawing, this is a great way to kind of get some of those early concepts down on paper to sit down with your tutors and sit down with your colleagues and discuss. Or if you're just looking for that more natural style to your drawings, it's a really good way and very quick and efficient way to get some drawings completed using the models that you've already created in SketchUp and that hand-drawn style. So, to give you an example, here's a few that I've produced. So, let's get into the video. So, as you can see, I'm starting off here with a basic rural neighbourhood model, bit of an urban design that I've made myself. Nothing over detailed really with this, you don't always have to go too much with the detail. Obviously at this stage we're using the hand drawing style so it might just be a bit of a concept sketch. And I've set up my first scene here just using the basic line drawing. What you're going to want to do then is set up your styles and then to do this we're going to start by using the tech pen. Now. Trust me when you click on Tech Pen, when you first see it in the SketchUp model, it's really not going to look too great, as you'll see here. We have to adjust that style to get that level of detail that we need to make it look like a more realistic sketch. So I'll just click on the Tech Pen, go over to the Edit tab, as you can see there, not a major amount of detail, lost a few bits of detail. So I'm just going to go and unclick extension and unclick halo. That's just going to try and simplify the lines a little bit and then I'm just going to drag that level of detail right the way up to make sure we're getting all of the information from the image. Then it's entirely up to you. You can do it as a simple line drawing without any shadows. I like to add the shadows on there because I think it gives that extra level of detail. So then we're just going to export that image very quickly. Now again, if you just want a simple black and white line drawing, to be quite honest, that's really all you have to do in terms of exporting from SketchUp. But what I like to do is just add a little bit of colour. Uh, and again, you could do this in post-production on Photoshop, but what I like to do is take another overlay, a colour overlay. As you listen in some of my previous videos, I just go into the shaded style and then go into edit and deselect the edges that's just going to give you some very simple block colors to work with and bring over so here we are then in photoshop i've got my color overlay over the top as you can see once i've turned the layer off we've got that pen line drawing underneath and then what I also like to do sometimes is I just export the simple line drawing it just makes it easier to select things because obviously the sketchy line style doesn't always have complete edges so what I'm going to do is take the colour overlay and just start to adjust the opacity as you can see here the drawing already starts to come to life by bringing that whitewashed colour look again if you want to, you can just select the areas that you're really trying to focus on to keep the colour. For this one, I've kept it all colour. I do quite like it, as you'll see, if you start to build up the layers in the drawing, it does really start to bring it to life. Next, as I mentioned before, because I'm, I've got that line export, it's very easy for me to just select that background and remove the skyline area. Again, just using the layer mask tool to remove that background, which is what's going to allow me to add the sky. And to add the sky, all I'm doing is I'm creating a new layer behind all of the others and then quite simply using a selection of blues and the gradient tool just to give it that element of depth. I started a bit too dark here and then I just massively dropped the opacity so it doesn't detract too much from the sketch. Finally finding the right balance. Again, you don't want to take up too much with the sky, you don't want to detract too much from the sketch itself. To be honest, like I've said before, you don't even need to do this if you don't want to, you could just leave it as it is. And then the next, I'm just going to drop some clouds in that skyline just to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
The style that I like to use, I just download a PNG online of a cloud and then I just go remove anything around it. If you've downloaded the PNG, it won't have that anyway. And then just go to image adjustments and brightness and ramp that all the way up so that it turns the whole cloud white. And then I'm just dropping those various different styles and different sizes into the skyline in the background just to add that little bit of extra visual interest again like i say i've done it i've tried to do it quick for the purpose of the video and i haven't actually downloaded the pngs i've just copy and pasted the images online but if you download them you won't have to remove that background then i'm just duplicating those around until I'm happy that the skyline looks realistic. Again, don't forget to flip these round and change the size of them to make them look a little bit more realistic. When you start just duplicating the same things, the same position, the same size, it can make it look a little bit repetitive and detract from the drawing. So I'm just adjusting them here, changing the sizes, flipping them round to make it just look that little bit more visually interesting. And as you can see, it just really starts to bring the sketch to life a little bit more. And then finally, I like to just adjust the opacity slightly because again, they're not going to be that bold in the sky. So by just dropping that opacity down to a 50, 60%, it just helps them to sit in that, that skyline nicely. Next, it's time to start adding some context and some people. These are straight line drawings that I've downloaded off the internet. You'll be able to find the links to these in the YouTube description below. Again, not really spending too much time just scaling these up using the free transform tool just to populate the image. I think this is really what makes the difference. It starts to really bring the image to life here by introducing not only the people, but I start adding a few different elements to the image, which is what takes it from just a very plain sketch to, to something more interesting and visually intriguing. Again, just repeating that process, adding some cyclists here. I think if you can show people in different context, facing in different positions, in different stances, it, it all adds to the intrigue of the, the image and makes it look a lot more interesting. And it's something that I definitely recommend doing. And also thinking about the size and scale of the people that you're adding. The further away they are in the image, the smaller they're going to be. And you might think, oh, well, what's that gonna add if you can't really see it? But believe me, it does start to add that depth. And I think that's where a lot of students can go wrong is by just focusing on what's on in the foreground. Really, you need to be adding that, diff that level of depth and layers to your images to make them look not only that little bit more realistic, but also just that little bit more interesting. And then all I'm going to do is just simply repeat the process for various different figures until I'm happy that I've got enough context in the drawing to bring the sketch to life. And there we have it, that is your hand-drawn sketch exported straight from SketchUp. Now, I thought I'd show you a few different examples as well as this one because it does work in a number of different scenarios. I think one of the other things to remember, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you don't always have to keep the colour. You can remove that colour overlay and still get that same kind of style. Here it is with the sky in the background, which again, I think looks quite nice. And then all I'm going to do is go back into those clouds and just double click to bring up the pop-up menu and click stroke to apply a stroke to the clouds and what that's going to do is that's just going to make those stand out in the background again and I think don't underestimate leaving the drawing black and white I think especially if you're close to a deadline you want to you know bring together a number of different sketches to show where you're at don't hesitate to use the sketchy style and just export them straight from SketchUp. I think it's better to have something like that that's going to give a greater idea of a concept sketch and then you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like this which again not quite as much detail as the colour but I still think it looks really good. 
Here's another couple of examples. Here's an aerial that I've taken from the exact same site, just blurring out some of the edges. But again, the process remains exactly the same and it gives a really nice overall drawing style. And here's another example using the technique that I mentioned earlier, where we actually take away the existing context and just highlight the main part of the works. I find this works a lot on the residential projects that I do if I'm doing extensions. What's quite nice about this one is that you can just really take the focus away from whatever's existing and bring attention to the main focal point which is the works and that's what i've done here for this terraced house extension all i've done is applied a layer mask to the surrounding context exported a color overlay as we've done in the video but then just used the layer mask to just focus the attention onto the extension itself mm -hmm.